Hi, I'm Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. This time around, I'll be breaking down the pros and cons of the Mavic Air 2S in hopefully digestible chunks. This is gonna be a tech-heavy analysis since I don't want any important details to get oversimplified. I'll be basing my judgments based on my own personal experiences, as well as experiences of other pilots in the droning community. Since it's so easy to get lost in reading review after review, I wanted to make this a synthesis of all the opinions surrounding the Air 2S, with my own flair, of course. We need to talk about your flair. Really? I, I have 15 pieces on. But before we get started, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on Joe news and tips. Pro one is the one inch sensor. If you've spent any time analyzing the capabilities of the Air 2S, I mean, I know I've probably spent way too much time at this point, then you're likely aware that it boasts a one inch sensor. This is a huge upgrade from the Mavic Air 2's half inch sensor. The megapixels available for stills are also nearly double from 12 megapixels on the Air 2 to 20 megapixels on the Air 2S. The Mavic 2 Pro happens to have a one inch sensor too. This is an interesting detail because the Air 2S is significantly cheaper drone priced at $999. Hobbyists, prosumers, and even professionals could all benefit from that larger sensor at a lower price point, not to mention a smaller body. As someone who prefers photos over video, the one inch sensor in a more compact drone is amazing. Pro 2 is the 5.4K at 30 frames per second video with 10 bit D log and HLG support. Once you get over the awesome sensor, you'll find that the Air 2S has impressive film capabilities in other ways too. You'll have access to 5.4K at 30 frames per second and 4K at 60 frames per second footage, which is more than enough to get most jobs done. It matches the Pro 2 and it's way better than the regular Air 2. The Air 2S also allows you to utilize 10-bit D-Log in HLG modes. Later on, we'll see how the Air 2S isn't a champion of everything, but it does cover its bases quite well. For a casual pilot, you won't feel like you're really missing out on much. Yes. Pro 3 is quiet propellers and flight. You'll be happy to hear that the Air 2S has a quieter flight than most drones on the market. It's nice for me, it's nice for the bystanders, and less annoyed bystanders loops back around and benefits me again. This is another reason why I say this is a great drone for hobbyists. The last thing you want when you're not totally sure of yourself is to have someone complain about the noise. This one time I was flying in Newport Beach and I was capturing content of a friend's house with a Phantom at the time. I was pretty new at flying and I was, you know, kind of nervous. If you're familiar with the Phantom line, they aren't the most quiet drones. And my friend asked me to get a tighter shot of his yard. A neighbor came out and complained about the noise and I had to reassure him I would only be a few minutes and that no, I was not spying on his yard. It was a pain to say the least. Professionals can benefit from the quieter props too, since not every job will involve buildings, mountains, and other objects. Sometimes people want to be photographed too. Crazy, I know. Oh. Now if I didn't know any better, I would say that that was sarcasm. Large family gatherings, festivals, weddings, and other events often demand a less invasive approach, which includes a quiet flight. That goes for many animals, by the way, and not just humans in their natural habitat. Pro 4 is four times digital zoom at 4K resolution. Speaking of using drones for wildlife photography, the Air 2S has a convenient feature designed to help pilots with all manner of close focus shots and subjects that can only be seen from a distance of four times digital zoom. The further you zoom, the worse the quality gets, as always with digital zoom. I have to say that this feature is probably more helpful for hobbyists because of that downside. The quality doesn't matter as much when your main outlet for photography and footage is on Instagram. But even if you're a professional, it still can be usable as long as you stay at the lower zoom levels. Again, the one inch sensor really helps minimize the damage done to your film. Although this section is supposed to focus on the benefits and it mostly does, I have to admit that there are some serious issues with the zoom on the Air 2S, aside from the usual problems with the digital zoom. DJI limits the digital zoom to normal color film. In other words, there's no zoom with photography and no zoom with D-Log or HDR. Man, that sucks! Well, I'm gonna 
talk to some people, straighten this out, man. Pro 5 is improved APAS 4.0. Out of all the Air 2S's benefits, the one that gets overlooked the most often might be the improved advanced pilot assistance system, also known as APAS. We're now on version 4.0, and it has gone steadily better with each release. The Air 2S has better obstacle detection in general, thanks to its new four-way sensors, which really helps with avoiding said obstacles. If you aren't familiar with APAS, it basically helps pilots navigate around obstacles by making the drone do all the heavy lifting. It automatically avoids any obstacles that it detects, resulting in safer flights no matter the environment. The APAS is a really great feature and can be used most of the time, but it's really important to mention that it doesn't work for 5.4K at 60 frames per second. You'll need to save this bit of tech for 4K and below. Con 1 is fixed aperture. The Air 2S doesn't have adjustable aperture. This first con for the Mavic Air 2S is probably going to be pretty frustrating for many of you, especially if you're hoping to use the drone for professional or prosumer shots. I can't say that I'm happy about it either, but it is what it is. The Mavic 2 Pro has a clear advantage here, which might be intentional on DJI's part. With the Air 2S sitting at a cheaper price point, it isn't allowed to be DJI's perfect golden child. I typically shoot at f2.8 to f5, so the fixed aperture is okay for most of my own work. Not every professional pilot is the same though, and this definitely makes the choice between this drone and other Mavics a lot more complicated. How dare you? Con 2 is that this guy is a little bit more unsteady in windy conditions. The Air 2S is a weaker drone compared to other options in the DJI's Mavic line, such as, you know, the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 3. Its size and sturdiness limits how many jobs the Air 2S is suited for. Literally anywhere that has unpredictable weather or, you know, predictable windy weather is just not a place for the Air 2S, which is another reason why this drone is only sometimes a good option for professional pilots. Another minor note is that it can only handle 15 to 20 miles per hour in practice, despite being advertised as capable of 23 miles per hour. It's a small discrepancy, and ultimately it's not likely to impact usage all that much. We all know better than to trust the ideal official numbers after all. Alrighty then. <coughs> Con 3 is 1080p recording and quick shots and master shots. The Mavic Air 2S usually has great image quality thanks to its sensor and ability to record in 4K at 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, you're limited to 1080p when using quick shots and master shots modes. This is okay for hobbyists who would only post on YouTube and social media, and significantly less okay for professionals who would regularly need high quality video. I think this is one of the areas where the Mavic Air 2S really shows its colors as a prosumer hobbyist drone. These modes can make things simpler, more accessible, and deliver good footage, but only if you can afford to sacrifice features that professionals really need. Con 4 is not good range in urban areas. Even ignoring the Air 2S's problems with wind, which are very relevant when filming tall buildings or in cities with wind tunnels, it's simply not a drone suited for architectural or large-scale jobs in urban areas because of its poor range. For this type of work, the Mavic Air 2S has nothing on the Mavic 2 Pro. I tested out the range of both drones at the Wedge here in California, and the range was noticeably shorter with the Air 2S because of the signal interference associated with urban locations. As seems to be the theme with all of these cons, the Air 2S's performance struggles when it comes to professional contexts. You're tacky and I hate you. Con 5 is Active Track still has focusing and pathing issues. I wish I could focus more on the good parts of the Focus Track suite because it's not all bad. For the purpose of this overview, I can't really spend time singing Focus Track's praises when it has serious issues. Active Track, the mode which allows you to tell your drone to automatically follow a target, still hasn't gotten over its focus and pathing problems. It's particularly bad when you're in a cluttered environment where there are trees or buildings to potentially get in the way of the drone's tracking. I was following a car in a gated community and the drone kept losing sight of it between trees and even if the car sped up a bit. You would think that with other drones like ones made by Skydio being out, DJI would have a drone that has better tracking. Still, I don't think this con is a deal breaker because there are clear improvements in the system. These are growing pains, and I'm excited to see where Active Track will go in the future. Based on how everything balances out, it's clear that the Mavic Air 2S is a phenomenal choice for hobbyists with tight budgets. From film quality to ease of access, it has a lot going for it. Overall, professionals can also find plenty of uses for this drone. The only caveat is that it can't can't do everything, so it works best when you have other drones in your collection. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on drone news and tips. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.